Okay, I should be recording now, so if anyone's watching this video, I assume you either bought some of our paint or thinking about it or just happen to accidentally find this video. So I'm going to uh, do a couple of videos, a few parts, and try to finish a section of a Mandalorian helmet, just so you can see how the product works. So I put this one off and I had to change the filament part way and for some reason it didn't connect but it was nice enough to sit on top the supports held it in place i guess so maybe i'll repair this one day maybe not but for now we're going to finish this section right here so you can see it has a lot of layer lines and it was a 0.3 millimeter so you can see some heavy stepping so our paint can cover the stepping no problem and it can take care of layer lines also, if you join two pieces together, for example, this helmet, you can also fill the gap line with the paint and sand it. So, same procedure as many other things. It's just, um, with our paint, it's nothing toxic. So there's no uh, Bondo involved, which, you know, is not the most pleasant thing and not that easy to sand. And you don't have to use any resin, which is very toxic and you should have a respirator on. The only thing is when you sand this, you should be wearing a mask. Um, I made my, I cut a little sponge out, so I made myself a little block because one of the things that I have a hard time with is these corners, these edges that meet. So I'm going to maybe try to use this, this time, wrap with some sandpaper because this is too high a grip, uh, too low a grip, but too, uh, too rough. So you might want to get yourself a little block. You should always sand with a block whenever possible, but because I've done this so many times, I'm actually getting pretty good with just using my hand. So all I have is a couple of pieces of 220. I'm going to use this uh, sandpaper. It doesn't clog as much because it is paint. You're sanding paint. You, you could go through a lot of sandpaper, right? Clogging with paint. Um, one of these, I could probably do two helmets. It did the, they, they last really good. And I've got a piece of 80 grit. So before I start, right, I just want to take the 80 grit and just give it a once over. It only takes a minute. I'm not sanding down any PLA. I just want to knock off any zits or anything crazy. I mean, if you have a big layer shift and there's a giant jetting out part, you're, you're going to have to sand that with, with uh, sandpaper. You don't want to build a helmet up an inch just to cover it. Okay, then I'm going to use some filler primer when I'm when I'm ready to uh, hit it with some primer. You don't have to use filler primer. The uh, our local store finally just got some back in, so I bought a couple of cans. I've been just using the regular primer, and it works fine. I'm guessing filler primer will will be even better. And once I'm happy with the smoothness, I will give it some uh, some of this. I'm just going to use the metallic finish, bright coat, chrome kind of color and see what we have. The paint I'm using is what the one we make, so I got myself a little batch made. There's 100 grams in this, and the last time I had 100 grams, I did two Mandalorian helmets with it, a, a bunch of pieces of Bo-Katan armor, and still had some left, so it can go pretty far if you, if you use it correctly. Don't waste it. And a brush, so the bigger the brush, obviously the faster you can do it. I'm old, I'm not in that big a hurry. I'm going to use the one I've been using, which isn't very good. It's not even, it doesn't even cost a dollar, but it's been working pretty good and I'm getting used to it. So I'm just going to use that. You can use a bigger brush. Let me just grab one here. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll use that. You see the difference in the size. This guy's pretty big, but he can really wipe it on quick, but I'm not always in it for speed. Sometimes you want to do a nice, nice job and see how good you can do. So I think I've said everything I need to say at this point in it. There'll be a couple parts of the video, like I said, so there'll be lots more time to talk. So I'm just gonna start painting. I'm trying to get this on the camera using my iPad. Let me see if I, if I bend this down, I can lift a little closer maybe. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I got some paint on my brush and I'm just gonna paint it. So as you paint, you can see the, see the layer lines. And I believe I have a thin paint made right now. I can make it thick or thin. And I usually start off with thick, but I guess that's not gonna happen this time. So let me 
check the camera. Yep, it's showing up. I also left the cap off too long, so I'm getting a few little dry pieces of paint in there, but that's okay. They'll sand right off. So I'm going to put a couple of coats of this on and cover this area. And I'll probably cover the, uh, the top too, because when I do spray paint this, I'm going to hit the top anyway, so I'm going to get it prepared. I'll, I'll do this little ridge probably too, but basically we're going to show how well it works on this section right here. So I'm going to finish painting this just like I'm doing, and I'll, I'll put a second coat on, and then when it's dry, I'll come back for the, the sanding stage. So when you're painting this, you want to get it kind of spread out, right? You don't want big glops like that on it. You can obviously sand that away later, but why make more work for yourself, right? And you want to retain the shape of the model. Like we don't want hills of of paint because that will show up when in, when you're uh, doing your final coat, whether it's metal or whatever. And even on the primer stage, it should show up. Now I'm, I'm losing my ability to get the paintbrush in there because the iPad camera is in the way. So I'm going to paint all this and I'm going to smooth it out nice. So it should only take uh, two minutes to paint that and then let it dry, put another coat on in two minutes. So not much work involved so far. And the sanding is easy too because you're not sanding PLA, right? You're just, you're sanding this top part smooth into the PLA. Ideally, you want to sand it so it meets the PLA in each section and fills all the grooves. So if I printed this helmet out at 0.1 millimeter, I could do one round of sanding and I'd be done. It would be smooth uh, because I've practiced enough and I've done it enough times. This is 0.3 millimeter, so it's got heavy stepping and, and deep layer lines. So I'm almost sure I'm gonna have to do two rounds. But every now and then, maybe 20% of the time, I get it on the first try and it's perfectly smooth. But I'm gonna actually almost do this one deliberately so I do two rounds so we can see how it works. So I'll um, well, come back when I'll do the sanding, we'll get there, but we'll go through the steps. So, so far, step one, um, you wanna get the 80 grit, knock off any zits, and uh, that just takes 30 seconds a minute. You're not sanding anything, you're just knocking off particles. And then you put some of this paint on and let it dry. So I'll be back when that's ready. So I'm back. And I think the side of the helmet is pretty dry. You know, and I apologize for the quality of this video. I'm not a professional YouTuber, so point the iPad and start yapping. Um, you can see the top is still a little bit wet, but I'm not doing the top anyway, so I don't care. But this side looks pretty dry. So what I normally do, so I get, your, get my 220, is I will sand the whole thing nice and lightly and quickly all over. And then I'll do it again. And I'll work that way rather than go at one spot till you get it the way you want it. So what I'm really listening for is that sound that the PLA makes on the sandpaper. So if I start hearing that sound, I've gone too far. I'm hitting the PLA. But what I'm going to do, I think, is sand it right down to the PLA anyway, just for the demonstration purposes because some people are gonna sand too far, right? Because it, it takes uh, a little bit of time, a little bit of experience, and have another light here. There we go. I don't know if that made it better or worse, casting shadows now. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand it right down to the PLA, I think, so you're, you're gonna be able to see the, uh, the gray and white stripes, and assume like that I sanded too much and we'll take it from there and do a second round. But ideally, so I'm just gonna do this one little spot right here just, just to the demo. So it's that easy to sand. It takes basically no effort whatsoever. And you can see right here, I'm actually getting really close to the PLA. You can see some white. So I'm right on the, on the nose. There, you hear that sawing sound? That means I've hit it, so I'm too far. Okay, so I've hit it, but that doesn't mean that the paint won't fill that in. So if I just kind of keep going at, at this this level right here, I may be able to just do this in one round, right? Because the paint will fill some in. 
Okay, so it's that easy to sand, no great effort. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand this whole side and not make you have to watch it, I'll just do it. And I'm gonna take it even down like probably further than this, even though I think I would probably stop right about there and hit it with primer. But I'm gonna take it right down so you can see. And then we'll go hit it with some primer and come back and do round number two. Okay, so I'm gonna sand the whole thing and then I'll come back. Okay, just coming back with a quick little point I forgot before I sand the whole thing. So I'm gonna try to get my finger in here. So you can see where I've hit PLA right here and I can, I can smooth that down. But over here, you should be able to see it's a little bit darker, right? So what you'll learn after doing a few is, can the paint cover this so it doesn't show a, a patch right here? If you don't see, um, I'm not sure how you would describe it, like a, a little hill, a little hill of, of paint where you could, you'll see the outline of that extra. So that's something you learn. You know, you want to feel the edges and make sure you can't feel an edge. Everything's feathered right into each other and up and down. And sorry, I just got a message. I was reading it. So I think I could paint this and it would not make a lump. But like I said, I'm going to sand everything right down to the PLA anyway, just so we can do a second round. So that's the only point I wanted to bring up. Okay, back with the next part of our video. So, I let me just give this a little brush off with my hand. This doesn't look very good, but... So, you can see I went right down to the PLA here, down this bottom section, this half. And over here, not so much. So this gives us a good chance to see the difference after I hit it with some primer and see the difference it makes. So you can see, should be able to see, right in here, you can still see the layer lines because I sanded right down to them. So we'll see if the primer fills that in or not. And then here I didn't go as far. And I tried to do, oh, actually I never did this one, but I did this one the best I could because this is the my Achilles heel. Getting into these corners without leaving a glop somewhere. Like it looks like there might be a little hill right there. So we'll see what happens with the paint. I went around the ear as best I could. So I'm gonna go around this and then I'm gonna go give this a couple of coats of uh, primer and then I'll come back and we'll see what we have in an hour or so when it dries. I think it's worth throwing in one more quick video right now uh, before I forget. Before I go prime this, I'm gonna take some paper towel and I'm gonna get right in all these corners and wipe everything out. Because if you leave junk like this in, it can really look terrible once the primer gets it and holds it in there. And then you have to sand it all out after. So I wanted to make sure I said that. And you cannot wash this or wet it to wipe it down before you uh, prime it. Because if you wet it, you'll just reactivate the paint and make a giant mess. So nice dry paper towel. I'll go in all the corners and then wipe down in the corners again. Just make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, our helmet is dry. So we're back and we're going to go do round two. So you can see the helmet on the camera. And the nice thing about this I didn't mention is when you're just sanding the paint down to meet the PLA, we're not sanding away a ton of the PLA and losing any structure or integ uh, structural integrity. We still have all the thickness plus a little bit of added in. So over here, you can see, I think it got it pretty good. And if I had done it like that over the whole thing, I could probably be done now. Even some of this that isn't perfect up at the top, I'll pull that close so you can see where I've gouged in with the sandpaper. You know, a lot of that could be filled in with uh, another coat or two of, of primer, filler primer. And this is a little tip for you too, if you want to see how your work is, take a picture of it with your phone or your iPad like this and hold it up close because you'll see things that you just can't see with your naked eye, right? You can magnify it and zoom it in. And if you look at the top, pretty much all those steps are gone. So I just have the little gouges I did from the sandpaper. So I'm going to paint over all these, all these little gouges, round two. 
and sand them very lightly, either with a 220 or I might just jump up to the 320 and lightly sand them. So just to give you a, a quick example of what I mean. So let's, let's put a gouge on the camera, we can see. So right there, there's some uh, gouging, right? So I would just take some paint and fill her in like so. That's really watery because I just took my brush out of the water and did not dry it off. So I'll do a little dab beside that. See a little bit of difference. And I'll just smooth it out. I wouldn't even have put that much paint on my brush to tell you the truth. And I'll just sand that down even with a nice finer grit of sandpaper, almost just polishing this off. And you wanna make sure you feather out your edges right into the other so the, the uh, primer can really cover it. And if we look down here at our area that I sanded right down, you can still see all the layer lines. And a lot of people, you know, will just leave it like this and say that's fine. And it is with another couple of shots of primer and a coat of paint, a lot of these will disappear too. But we'll see on our final product. So I'm gonna completely paint this over again and do that whole section again as you know intended i did kind of did that on purpose okay so i'm going to throw some more paint on these i'll come back show you once i once i have the paint on and then i'm going to sand it with a finer sandpaper and hit it with some primer and that should be done we should have a nice smooth helmet and then we'll put some metal on it okay back as promised there's the helmet painted for round two cover up all the layer lines i think i, I may actually have to do a round three on this but i hope not I'm gonna take my time, 320 sandpaper. I'm actually gonna wrap it around that the little sponge block right over here so I don't gouge anything. When you use your fingers, it takes time and practice to get it down. You'll sometimes put too much pressure on one finger and you'll dig out. And that's what I did all over the place there, but I'm, I'm doing this kind of quickly. I don't really enjoy making videos. Um, that's about all of his dimension. Uh, I did most of it up here rather than just do the spots that needed it because there's so many spots rather than trying to get five or six or ten spots to all meld into each other and make them it's easier just i find to do it in one one piece and just sand the whole thing rather than try to make one meet but like i said i'm hoping i can polish this down just be done in two rounds um, i know the first helmet i did the first thing i did which was a helmet i'd had to do a seven or eight i don't remember rounds and you know it's like anything a little bit of practice and you get better but i was it was pretty bad <laughs> you know i would i would have 18 spots that have to be fixed and i would fix them and then i go spray then i'd have 15 that had to be fixed then down to 12. And once you get used to it and the, the sanding is really the, the big skill i mean anybody can put on paint right well this kind of painting not anybody can paint but anybody can slap paint on a helmet like this it's the sanding that's the trick. So whenever you can use a sanding block, use one. A block on this won't help very much because you make only contact where the tangent line hits the helmet, right? So very little contact. But with a sponge, you, you, can, you can bend it a little bit and get on more surface area. So it, it's worth it for a little bit, especially these corners. I didn't touch too many of these edges that drive me crazy because I think they're pretty good. With another coat of primer, I think I'm happy with how that meant. I'm not happy with the uh, the top of this because I never finished the top of this. But I'm happy with how the wall meets it. It's got a nice sharp corner in there. Everything looks good. So if I was to do the whole helmet, which I don't even have a whole helmet, I would have done this top, of course, too. So I'm going to let this dry. 320, nice and easy and slow and polishy. And hopefully that's it. Then I'll go prime it and come back and we'll see what, what happens after that. Okay, take three. I've been trying to show a new batch of paint that I made to show the difference between the old paint, which is over on this side, and a new one that hasn't been left open that doesn't have crumbs in it because it's been drying out. So, Every time I try to make the video, for some reason it goes into slow motion and you can't hear what I'm saying. So I'm running out of space to paint on. So hopefully this video works because I'm gonna give up after this. So this is what it would look more like. A brand new uh, 
not half dried oak jar. So you just paint it on, smooth it as smooth as possible. You know, make your sanding life easier later. Put two coats on, three if you got some heavy stepping, like up at the top on the on the, on the uh, his mohawk. All right, so I'm gonna do one more little painting piece here. And there's a piece on there that should be snipped off that I should have did with some 80 grit paper, but I don't really care about this because I think it's going in the garbage. Well, not the garbage, I'll probably just melt it down, but just want to show you uh, how easy the paint goes on when you have a nice, not dried out can. be able to see the difference oh please video have worked I don't want to make that again all right the next video although I'm not sure where where we left off I ended up having to do something else and lost track of things but um, we painted this for round two and I've sanded it now and I'm feeling like that's okay I'm gonna I'll check it over one more time just to be sure and I'm going to go prime that and see how it looks. Maybe paint it black. I think you, you're supposed to paint it black before metal, so it goes on better or shows better. Um, the other thing I was going to say, I don't think I mentioned yet. Oh, maybe I did. When you're uh, when you're starting off, your floor is the PLA, right? And you're sanding, and you don't want to go down below that PLA. You want to keep it smooth. And if you have to do a second round, your new floor is the is the primer now. So you don't want to dig through that primer and then you know, have to do the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, it's just a new floor. So I uh, might go over this one more time. There's my two pieces of sandpaper. So that's all the sandpaper I've used so far. And if I, if you see, if I just cut the edges off those, I've hardly used any. So it is a good sandpaper. And, you know, so far this is pretty cheap, right? Just some paint was put on there. So I don't think there's anything else to say. I'll go uh, prime this. And let it dry and uh, I'll wipe it off first and then we'll see what we got okay just ran back upstairs here with the helmet so I'm happy with uh, how it came out I did ding it on the door right above the ear when it was coming out but I think that could fill up with paint we'll see and uh, that's it so we're gonna I'm gonna go paint this black now painting is the bane of my existence I'll paint it black come back video it and then I'll let it dry overnight and then we'll hit it with some metal tomorrow so I have a very dirty basement and I always manage to get some specks of dirt underneath the paint and sometimes I get orange peel but we'll see if I get lucky with the paint this time so just to review first some 80 grit paper knock off all the zits and if you do have a real bad layer shift of course you'd have to sand that down if it's really bad and then you just paint it so considering i just did this one section so this is about 30 seconds of 80 grit sandpaper so i could probably do a helmet just knocking off the the uh little pieces of plastic take maybe a minute or two then painting i could probably paint this whole helmet two minutes it doesn't take long and sanding mm, four minutes three minutes maybe Cause you don't have to do it perfect the first time around but it, you know if you take your time and give it 10 minutes or more sanding and, and go carefully you might be done in one round and then you just paint it and you're done if you're not paint it again with some more primer and um, you'll see you're not done then you paint it again with our paint sand it and the primer is now your new floor that you're trying to sand to and that's it so total time just to do this section, you know, maybe five, seven minutes, somewhere in there. Really no effort at all. No toxic chemicals, nothing bad. It's not perfect, but nothing will ever be perfect. And it's better than many helmets and things I've seen done on, on YouTube and Facebook and other places. And it's probably not as good as the best ones that are done. But once this gets a coat of black, it will fill in a little bit more. And then the metal, so we'll, we'll see how good it comes out. Okay, just ran the helmet back upstairs. So there's our black on there. And 
you know, to, to my eye, it looks uh, perfect, beautiful. And that is it for today. I'm going to put it back down. Oh, God. I got a bubble already right there. A whole bunch of them. Yep. Always, always, always the paint job. Anyway, I'm going to put this back downstairs, let it uh, dry overnight, and tomorrow I'm going to put some metal on it. And Bubbles or not, I really need to learn how to paint. So this is the broken helmet, and I decided I would uh, give it a little squirt of metal paint. So I just tried a new metal paint. It's not the chrome one. I think it's dry. I'm going to try touching it. Yep. Well, almost dry. So there you go, all the layer lines are gone, very little work, very little time put in just waiting for things to dry. Paint, sand, prime, paint, sand, prime, I think this was just two. I'm doing three things at once so I can't always remember. So, but it's just, it's kind of like a motorcycle helmet and maybe another coat of this paint, the same metal might do, do a lot uh, to fix that up. Not that there's anything that really needs fixing up, but with the light shining on it, you can see the little speckles, but without so much light, it gets a little more metally. So one little uh, tutorial finished, and I'm working on uh, a different section of a Mandalorian helmet and a sword blade. Okay.